Hey, 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 this is Akebono Gregory Monavis Jr. and welcome to my video of my Bar Top Arcade build. Now I bought this kit off of GameRoomSolutions.com and there is a lot of parts that you can customize here. The buttons, the artwork here, I'll show you the side panel here a little bit. But let's go ahead and get through the video of how I built this thing and then stick around and I'll show you some games. So here's the box the Bar Top Arcade comes in and it's a pretty heavy box. It's probably roughly 60 pounds or so. So be careful when you lift this thing up. Go ahead and use your legs. Don't use your back and just be very, very careful with it. And uh, you don't want to damage any parts either. And now to the unboxing. As you can see, they did a very good job of packaging this all up. Didn't see any major damage. I mean, a little couple chip marks here and there, but nothing, nothing too big, nothing to be uh, concerned about. And if there are any issues with any of the parts, missing parts or damage, Ryan at Game Room Solutions will definitely help you out with that. He's really responsive to email as well. All my correspondence with them has been via email. So feel free to reach out to them if there's any issues. And here's a layout of all the parts that were in the box. And I didn't see any major damage and a uh, little, little damage here with the speaker, but that's no big deal. It's like a $5 part. And I'm not even going to bother them for replacement on that. But here are all the paneling we've got here and a bunch of pieces and no major damage. Just inspecting for them as we're looking over it. So our paneling is here and then some of our hardware, power supplies. We've got the Raspberry Pi. We've got the amplifier, LED lights. Sorry you can't see everything. My photography skills are a little off. But everything looks in order here. The T-molding is uh, ready to go and also the plexiglass. So very happy. And here are all the graphics. I was very eager to see how this all would come out. And these are all customized by me. I picked out all these graphics and I learned a a Photoshop program called GIMP, well, a Photoshop clone, I should say, and it's free versus uh, Photoshop. And just with the little research and uh, practicing around on YouTube, I was able to customize the graphics for this. So very happy. As you can see, I am a huge Tron fan, but here's the admin panel where your Raspberry Pi controllers are basically going to go, and you got all your buttons that are going to go all over it, and then the control panel which you'll have your joystick here on the left and your coin start and the six button layout. And you'll see all that in the uh, final product. And then here's the marquee. And my nickname is Guy. And this will light up when I put the lights within the marquee. And it's uh, translucent a little bit, so it'll kind of kind of glow so it's dark. And then here are the um, panels for the left, and si left side and right side of the uh, panel of the bar top. And as you see, I've got a little old school Tron new school Tron and I was able even to blend a couple pictures into it so it's seamlessly so these are like two pictures put into one and I'm sure Ryan helped me out a little bit on the gradient and then behind there is the uh, bezel that will install over the monitor. Now you're going to want to go ahead and clean up all the paneling because when you go ahead and put the graphics on it the graphics are a, a peel stick it's a sticker you don't want any debris in between and that can cause some bubbling it can cause imperfections so go ahead and give a wipe down of all the paneling before you go ahead and install the graphics that that way it looks a lot better and uh, you're not going to run any into any surface or texture issues when you go ahead and put your graphics on it so full disclosure here, I have never installed graphics before and on Game Room Solutions you can watch a video on how to install graphics so you can get some tips and tricks there. But I went ahead and used a little painter's tape to go ahead and orient the graphics in the, and just to kind of keep it locked down a little bit and you want to really, really make sure that you've got it in about the proper place. And it's not gonna fit perfectly, which is fine, but as you see here, I did, I did a little half inch fold of the uh, back protector before I go ahead and peel down the entire line. But it's in very important that you get that, that those edges and those corners. And like I said, it's not gonna fit perfectly. It's gonna be off center a little bit. You wanna use your fingers to kind of rub, rub or feel for where the buttons are gonna go and just kind of slowly work 
the sticker as it goes down. As you can see here, I'm peeling away a little bit at the, at the painter's tape just so I can go ahead and keep moving down, moving down, moving down. Once you have your graphics in place, go ahead and use a dry wrap, uh, no chemical on this whatsoever. Do not use any chemicals and just go ahead and rub out any bubbles or imperfections that you might see. Double check your work and you'll be ready to move on. The plexiglass will be held in place by the button. So make sure you have a nice sharp knife or a, or a straight edge and again, Make sure that you are using proper orientation with the plexiglass over the admin panel. And again, you can see I'm feeling for the buttons and behind, so I have the proper orientation. And then you just want to do a little crisscross with your knife. And only do a couple buttons at a time just so you can get the plexiglass secured down. And it's very important that you make sure you, again, you're having good orientation because now you're cutting into your graphic. There's no going back from this point and then just go ahead and place the buttons in place. Sometimes you have to play with it a little bit, push it in, screw it in, and then go ahead and put the locking nut behind it. So as you see, I got one side in and I'm gonna go ahead and put the other side in just to make sure that now the plexiglass is secured in place. And then after this, you just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat once you feel that you're satisfied of the placement of the plexiglass. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that you orient all your buttons at an angle that way when you do put in the switching mechanism and wiring up it'll be easier to get to instead of it all being straight plus there's going to be a lot of wiring as you'll see here in the future of this video and it's best to have that angle put in a little bit that that, that way the, the wires will hide behind the panel a lot easier now i had some issues here with the usb controller the uh the dust cap was basically getting in my way and would not allow me to screw the nut on the back. So after some playing around, I just went ahead and removed the dust cap because it's really not all that necessary. And this will allow you to go ahead and put in a, a controller of your choice um, via, US, via the USB ports. Like there's a Super Nintendo um, style controllers out there just for those type of games that aren't really made for arcades. Now the second time around I was a little more confident with installing the graphics. As you see I still use my painter's tape to make sure I have the proper orientation and I also use a plexiglass as well the, that, that's going to go over the control panel to give me a little bit of orientation. But go ahead and do that half inch fold of the underlayment and just work it along and make sure you've got it in the in the part that you have and don't worry if you mess up a little bit because you can peel the sticker back and place it back down in the proper place if you want to but just try to avoid doing it too many times because it will start to use its stickiness and then just move along with your dry rag like I said I've got nothing on that rag I know you see the cleaner behind me but don't use any cleaner on this stuff it can damage the the graphics so just a dry rag just to push along and make sure everything's uniform and, and you're satisfied with your work. Now for the plexiglass install over the control panel. Get that orientation, get the alignment to your satisfied and just start out with a couple buttons. And as you see, I'm feeling for the hole behind the, the coin, what well, will, will be the coin button at least, and just make sure you're in there and then have your uh, knife handy and you're just gonna go ahead and do crisscross uh, cuts of both of those again. Once you do this, remember, this is it. So go ahead and make sure that it's to your satisfaction and then go ahead and mount up those uh, couple buttons just so it's locked in place and that the rest of the buttons will install easily. Then after you get all the buttons in place and you're satisfied with that, go ahead and flip it over, install the locking nuts and again, the orientation. Go ahead and put those buttons at an angle, all uniform so when it comes down for wiring later, and the switches, it'll be a lot easier to install. The marquee does not have any stickers because it's just gonna be mounted between the plexiglass. So when you install it, that's what's gonna hold it in place. So no sticker necessary. Now go ahead and install the pins in the various parts of the left panel as picture here and just Hand tight, do not use any type of electric screwdriver because you may or can damage the panel. So go ahead and use a Phillips head screwdriver and just go ahead and walk around and install all those pieces and make sure they're nice and secure.
Now before you tighten down or even mount your controller, make sure you go ahead and attach the cable that's provided with it. And this is only for the Sanwa sticks. You wanna make sure that you have it attached before you tighten them down because if you don't, you're gonna have a hard time trying to get that cable attached. I made that mistake and that should help you out in avoiding that issue. Now for the player two side, I went ahead and grabbed a pin here out of my toolbox and that's because the graphic holes are still in place and it's harder to push the screw through. So to go ahead and prime that, I go ahead and push through. Sorry that my uh, aspect is off there a little bit, but you get the idea and then you can just go ahead and proceed and put on the other controller. Now when it comes to wiring all the wires to the USB encoder, this graphic that you receive in the package corresponds to which button is going to connect to what on the USB board, but you have to think backwards because you're going to have your control board flipped upside down. So don't make the mistake of putting the cables in the wrong hole. Just double check your work. When it comes to hooking up the controls, I'll show you that later in this video when it comes to testing out the buttons and the controls, so stay tuned. Now if you have a Windows laptop, you can use a USB controller to plug into it and then can test out the functionality of the buttons and the controllers. The only catch with the Sandwall controller is that you do have to test each wire individually to find where in the function that is, meaning up, down, left, right, and there's a ground wire. So there's five wires, little back and forth. Don't go by the color coding either because color does not match up and it doesn't even match up to the left and right side. But in the marquee below, you can go ahead and see, I put in a description of where to find this in a, on a Windows 10 laptop so you can go ahead and test all your buttons and controllers. Now with everything hooked up, use a Windows tool to test functionality of your up, down, left, right, and all your buttons, and you'll see them correspond on the screen that they are indeed working. Now make sure you mount your speakers, amplifier, and wires onto the board before installing it into the cabinet. Same goes for your monitor and the monitor wires. Do not install the other panel until you have the bottom piece and the door in place. The final piece for main assembly will be the other panel. Take your time and don't force any parts as you risk damage. I found it easier to apply the artwork on the ground. Use a towel or some kind of buffer so when you flip to the other side, you don't scratch the artwork. Of course, go ahead and clean the side panels before applying the side artwork. Now make sure you align the artwork before peeling back the underlayment. It's okay for the artwork to go over the edges. This will get tacked down in place by the T-molding later. You just wanna make sure you have good alignment all the way around. That's why I'm being very thorough and making sure I've got this about as even as I can. Again, the artwork going over the edge is normal and that's the way it was built so you have some play. I used a drill for some extra weight just to try to keep the artwork in its general vicinity so it doesn't move around too much as I'm peeling away the underlayment. But go ahead and make your fold on the underlayment and move slowly, don't be in a rush, and push out any bubbles and excess as you're working down the line with your towel. Though it's not necessary, I cut off some of the excess artwork. Be careful and hold the blade at an angle and use the contours of the wood for your cut. Go slow and don't hurt yourself. And don't worry about it not being perfect. The T-mold will press down any excess artwork. I recommend starting at the back of the cabinet. That way the seam will be hidden. You can use a mallet or a hammer. However, make sure the strike head is clean so you don't leave any marks on the T-mold. There is a protectant layer on the T-mold, but better safe than sorry. 
For the corners, you're gonna wanna make a cut about one inch before and after the corner, and then carefully cut the plastic retainer. This will help make the T-mold wrap around the corners more smooth. Here's a closer look on how to cut the corners. You notice a little bit of the artwork bleeding over the edge. Just go ahead and fold that under the T-mold and you'll be fine. The final apply is to the front panel, which is not shown in this video, but as you can see from this picture, there's plenty of T-molding left over for any mistakes. Give the interior of the marquee area good cleaning before you apply the LED tape. And before you peel any of the LED tape, do a dry run to get the relative length. Just like the side art, you want to peel the underlayment as you work along the LED strip. Make sure that you go ahead and do two runs and place it in front of the speakers because if you do place the LED lights behind the speakers, you can end up getting a shadow effect. So pretty much the LED strips are going to sit right behind the marquee. The LED tape has cut indicators, which is about every three lights or so, so make sure you cut in the proper area. Now for a quick test, and it works. For the marquee and the brackets, I went ahead and did a dry run to see how the light looks. I made an adjustment to reduce light bleed. I then went ahead and used some handy painter's tape to hold it in place. Using the self-tap screws, I decided to use my impact drill because I had to drill through the plastic bracket and wood. Be careful not to over-tighten or you will damage the cabinet. Cut off the power connector on the power strip and then cut another three inch or so piece you'll need for spare soon. Strip the wires, then crimp the female disconnect to the green, white, and black wire. Using a guide I drew up from Game Room Solutions YouTube channel, connect the rest of the wires to the outer switch. Use the spare wires you cut earlier to make the loop connects. Here's the layout on the left hand side. Then the loop connects on the right side. On a side note, this is my wire stripper and crimper. I don't know the exact name of it, but I picked it up at AutoZone or I'm sure you can find it at any local hardware shop, but this is a great tool to have for any electric work. Now this is the computer also known as a Raspberry Pi and this is going to be the heart and the soul of how this whole thing is going to work, how we're going to be able to play video games. And all it is is a small footprint computer. It's not necessarily made for gaming. You can put whatever operating system you want in, or at least what's supported. Uh, Linux runs on here, Windows runs on here. This happens to be running a operating system called RetroPie which is also Linux as well. And it has all your standard ports that you usually see here. We've got Ethernet, we got USB, turn it around here on the back, and then we've got our power, HDMI, and audio out. And then right here, kind of hard to do this with one hand here, but right here is our SD card. I'm not gonna pull that out, but that is our SD card where the operating system and all the games run. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, cinch it up, and show you how it looks. And here's everything cinched up. I went ahead and put some uh, double-sided tape 
underneath the Raspberry Pi. That way it can be held in place. The controller wires, forget it. I'm not even going to try to clean that up because there's just too many and it's all over the place and it's twisted and it's backwards. But I cleaned up as much as I can. This is the wire for the LEDs and then of course the, the speaker wire here and then we've got our power for our amplifier and then went ahead and just put um, a Velcro around the power. I didn't cinch this down because the door kind of when it closes, opens and closes, it plays. And I, I mean, yeah, I could keep this loose, but then it's just going to be pushing against those wires. And I want to try to separate the power and the controller wires as much as I can. All right, there you have it, folks. This is the final product. The build is done. And I had a lot of fun putting this thing together. And I learned a lot and I made a lot of mistakes as well. And some people are asking roughly how long it took to put this together. And I've got about 15 hours or so put into this thing. And that's because this is my first time putting together a cabinet like this. Just showing you off some of the artwork here. So yeah, the more, the more you do things, the, the better you should get at it, get out of it. Right. And I only had to run to the hardware store twice because uh, the screws that were included, because you do get all the hardware in this kit. So you shouldn't have to run to the hardware store, but sometimes things come up. But anyways, the screws that came with this kit would not hold this monitor. And this is a 22 inch monitor. So I just had to run to the hardware store and get longer screws. It was no big deal. The second time is because I messed up a couple of the electrical connectors and I had to redo those. So I had to go buy new connectors as well. But I mainly use the Phillips head screwdriver to put this thing together but you will have to have some basic electrical knowledge. So other tools will be needed if you are going to put this thing together yourself. So just be aware of that. Um, Ryan will put this together for you if you want, don't wanna do all this, but it's gonna cost you a fee. So just give you a heads up on that. Now I do have a future project that I'd like to do for a vertical video cabinet as you see right here and a vertical video cabinet is exactly what it is. It's meant for vertical games. This, as you see, is a horizontal or widescreen games, a lot like what our TVs are, computer monitors, movie screens. Now, you can play vertical videos on a horizontal screen, and it's just gonna put it right in the middle, and it'll look pretty much like people's cell phone videos that they like to record these days. Of course, that's my little uh, sarcasm there. Anybody who knows me, I'm not a big fan of portrait mode per se, but uh, that's an argument for another time. So anyways, back to, back to the uh, differences here is that yes, you can play a horizontal game on a horizontal screen and or vertical game on a horizontal screen and it's gonna put it right in the middle. However, if the screen is flipped vertical, horizontal games are not gonna fit exactly on the screen. It's just gonna look bad. So there are, video games that are made for horizontal and some video games that are made for vertical. And this, this, this horizontal is more universal because it allows you to uh, play both. So enough of the yapping and let's show you some games. Oh, <laughs> 
All right. Well, that's the end of the video. And uh, I will do another video on all the parts and all the options you can use to build and purchase from the base cabinet all the way through the artwork as well. And uh, one other thing I didn't mention is that this image can also play Nintendo and Sega games as well. And there's a port on the front for a USB. And if you get one of these old school looking controllers, like the Super Nintendo controller here, it'll connect up via the USB controller and that'll allow you to play other video games as well. So this does more than just the arcade. But that'll go ahead and wrap it up. Please send any comments, suggestions, or feedback to akibonoradio at gmail.com. And of course, you can leave comments in the YouTube section down below as well. Please like the video and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all soon. Later.